All right, so we're going to meet Rob Shell. He works with CSSI. He does uh, cost segregation studies, and we're gonna go talk about how he does that and what cost segregation is and how that helps investors like me. I am the good news guy. If I find the right client that, uh, that owns commercial property and is, be, is profitable, what I can do is really cash flow them, give or take about 10% of the value of their property within a few weeks. It's not in cash, but it's in a deferred federal tax deduction. We do engineered based studies that provide a deferred deduction for my clients to offset their current and future IRS tax burdens. So if they owe the IRS, let's say, $150,000 based on multiple assets and cash flow th that they've created on their own, and they had a great year and they owe $150,000, and I work with two of their smaller properties and provide 10% of deferred deductions on those properties that create a deduction of $100,000, they're only paying $50,000 $50, in taxes that calendar year. If by chance the deductions that I create for them are more than what they owe the IRS. It just carries forward to the next calendar year. So it's, it cash flows them not only potentially for one year, but it could be a season. All right, so what I'm looking for is any physical assets, things like the drinking fountains here, things like their security systems up there I see. Um, those are all components that have a shorter life and they can be deducted at a faster rate. Um, you know, video cameras. But basically it's a walkthrough of the property. Um, and here we're going into a bathroom that's locked. <laughs> okay, here's one that's open. Um, and we need to kind of take pictures of all this. These are physical assets that are short-term assets. Okay. So basically it's just documenting again. So it's a fairly consistent building with a lot of the same product in here. So at this point, what's going through my mind is I wanna get up high and let's talk to uh, the owner and see if we can get up high somewhere. Is this place not incredible? It's awesome. It's awesome. You did a really nice job. I wanna tell you, and for it to be our first one, I'm so excited about this. Do you have any architectural diagrams or oh, this? blueprints of, Absolutely. of how this was all done? And I've got video and pictures of how it was, because this roof was caving in. There it, were trees growing up through the floor here. It's pretty crazy. All right. At the so, difference. Actually, some of that might be helpful yeah. because you've done some major improvements. Major improvements. So when you send me the documentation for all those improvements, because I know you, you do some stuff sweat equity because you have your own construction right. crew. Right. And the challenge is, Not as is much to here. put it on, you've got it on documented on paper on all your expenses. Oh, absolutely. Okay, you got it in, in, in a condition where it could last for a very long time because it was falling apart. Yes. So that's phase one. Phase two is then making all the improvements for your specific vertical business, which is the self-storage. Okay. So all that stuff, those are like two different types of components. One is save the building, get it back in shape. Right. And two is all, put in all the infrastructure that is your value add and what you can actually charge money for that people will pay. There's several pieces that become a cost segregation study. We have to collect some formalized information uh, that becomes documentation to generate the acceptable numbers for a deferred depreciation for the client. Part of that process is a, a formalized site survey, which is digital pictures to be able to prove to the IRS on a specific date, today's date, that a property existed and it was in a certain form of development. What we're doing today is documenting the property both externally and internally. I'm gonna go around and take pictures of all the different features and assets. Any kind of electrical panels is really important. Um, if there's any kind of generators in a, in a physical building, that's important. Those are all higher value assets that can be depreciated at a faster rate. 
We also need to be taking um, um, the, the transaction documents, the formalized mortgage closings, appraisal documents, any kind of improvement invoices from the client that they spent money on to make improvements, and it becomes a digital document. All those pieces and components combined together provide our engineering team the basis to be able to come up with the numbers to generate that, give it anywhere from seven to 10%. 10% is a good round number to use for a deferred deduction on the value of a commercial building. Okay, so what, is there any kind of office? No. Um, yeah, well, um, I, we have a utility room. A utility room, and then uh, one of the bathrooms was locked. I need, I need to get that bathroom. Okay. Okay. I got pictures of the one that was open. So this was a big obstacle because they're not making these right now, and everything's back ordered a year to two years. So we really? actually had to rebuild part of this. Really? Okay. Uh, a little data. Camera, video, routers. Dude, I'm so excited. Our other building we're fixing to start. Yeah. Twice as big as this. Wow. Because I flip houses, obviously, I've got, look, all those are microwave ovens. You see that? <laughs> and underneath them are ranges over there, dishwashers. I've got probably eight, eight uh, storage units full of house flipping things. Can I, can I get to the back side of the Absolutely. building? Absolutely, I can show you. Do you um, want to go up here or no? I want to go up there. Okay, you just walk right up there and open that latch and it's, it's right there. You can see everything. It's clean up here, ain't it? Yeah. yeah. When I, a lot of times when I come up to these places, cause I do this a lot, usually there's like the work crew downstairs has like a party thing up here. Three coolers, five oh, that's chairs. Funny. <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> latched? No, that's latched. Okay. Cool, man. Got that done. Okay, so one bathroom and the back side of the building. Okay. What is the best type properties that you usually do a studies on? Um, what benefits the investor the most? Properties that have a lot of moving parts, a lot of moving pieces. Is this so, a lot of moving pieces? So what doesn't do well is a raw warehouse that is wide open okay. and doesn't have a lot of moving pieces. So medical is probably number one. Right. But close behind that are apartment complexes, multifamily, okay. um, because there's a lot of multiple kitchens, multiple bathrooms, those are all huge. Um, any kind of a factory with a lot of infrastructure and components, uh, all if it's, if it's a fixed asset that's connected to the building, if you connected can't- Connected meaning bolted to the bolted floor. Bolted to the floor. If you can't move it out with a moving company, like furniture does not qualify, right. okay? But if you can't move it out with a moving company, it qualifies for cost segregation, okay? Interesting. So those, are, those pieces are important. Self-storage as a vertical, which is where we're standing right now in this facility, this is a very, very high return on investment for cost segregation, okay? okay. But Things like a single family home, three bedroom, two bath, $300,000 strike price, and the investor puts another fifty dollars to $80,000 into that property, that is a wonderful asset for me to work with that can add a ton of value for that smaller investor. So don't look, don't, it, it's, there's a variety of classes, anything from strip centers to single family homes to medical to um, I've done movie theaters. I've done golf courses. An interesting model that I'm doing right now, I've got a client down on the Gulf Coast that is investing in multiple RV parks. Yes. Interestingly enough, as much as you would think, okay, land doesn't qualify within cost segregation, okay. but interestingly enough, the value of all the pads, all the infrastructure for sewer and for electrical in an RV park, cash flows extremely well with my model and my service. Once we did one or two of these, it was part of their decision to turn their company from a multifamily asset holding company to primarily an RV park company. And it was based, it wasn't their whole decision, but the tax component was definitely something that said, this is awesome, Why, well, this is part of our formula now, and now we're gonna go out and churn RV parks in the Southeast United States. 
So that, that asset class works very well as well. What I've learned is people who have scaled their flipping business, you know, that usually comes with um, a few problems. Taxes is one. So th this is a great way to offset all of, a lot of those taxes. It's Good. made a huge difference for us. That's awesome. It fires me up. Yeah. And you know, once you actually see it in motion and you see it work, it's like, dude, it just opens up a whole new world. So you don't get into the land. So I'm surprised parking lots are part of the, your study. It's it's not it's it's the asphalt and concrete. It's the, it's the land, not the land underneath. It's the asphalt and the concrete. The striping and, and the lights and the and poles. the lights and the, the 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 strips that block the cars. Any kind of work for drainage, all of those invoices to move dirt and to do make it formalized to be able to handle the water. That all counts. It's the raw dirt that doesn't count. Right. Um, how much of this parking lot do you own? And the width of this, all the way to the. Grass. Oh boy, I need to document that. You is that in? I got a survey. Is that the blueprint yeah. in the survey? Well, uh, I don't have a blueprint that has. I didn't that. even I think that. I just thought survey. it was the. I, I, oh, I like when he says, "Oh boy." Oh boy. Like we about to get some deductions up in here.